To learn more about your new Lincoln, click on any of the feature categories in the lower right corner. Also, be sure to check out distinctive features and all of the links at the top of the screen. If you wish to visit Lincoln's official website, click on the logo in the upper left corner or to exit the CD, roll your cursor over the main menu button and choose the exit option. To learn more about your new Lincoln, click on any of the feature ca Select one of the features listed to the left in order to learn how each one helps make your vehicle distinctively Lincoln. If at any point you would like to learn more about the given feature, click on the link provided in each paragraph. To access the Owner's Guide content provided on this CD-ROM, click on one of the four main buttons located at the bottom right corner of the screen. For the most comprehensive information available, please consult your printed Owner's Guide. Your audio system offers the speed sensitive volume feature, which allows the radio volume to automatically compensate for road and wind noise as the vehicle's speed increases. Your audio system also offers the Radio Data System, RDS, feature. With this feature, your audio system is able to receive text information from RDS equipped FM radio stations. The Dual Zone Climate Control System allows the driver and front seat passenger to select different temperature and fan settings for personal comfort. When the air conditioning is operating, recirculated air helps to reduce the amount of time required to cool the inside of the vehicle. Recirculated air can also reduce undesirable odors from entering the vehicle. Also, remember that your rear window defroster control not only clears the rear window of ice, mist, and fog, but also heats both outside mirrors when the control is activated. The rear window defroster control is located on the instrument panel. For your convenience, your vehicle is equipped with cup holders mounted in the cushion of the front center seat. The cup holders fold out from the leading edge of the center seat and are designed to over-rotate from the seat when subjected to a heavy load. The cup holders can be reset by rotating to the closed position. Use only soft cups in the cup holder. Hard objects may injure you in a collision. The auto lamp control provides light-sensitive automatic on-off control of the exterior lights normally controlled by the headlamp control. The auto lamp system also keeps the lights on for a pre-selected period of time after the ignition switch is turned to the off position. To turn the auto lamps on, rotate the headlamp control, which is located to the left of the steering wheel, counterclockwise. The Electronic Message Center, located on your instrument cluster, displays important vehicle information through a constant monitor of vehicle systems. This system only works when the ignition is in the on position. The Message Center allows you to check distance traveled, monitor the average speed and fuel economy, check the on-off status of the speed control and air suspension system, see problems such as door, trunk ajar, See a more accurate speed than your analog speedometer while driving. See how many kilometers, miles you can drive before running out of fuel. 
and see how many liters, gallons of fuel remain in the fuel tank. You can select and reset different features on the message center by using the message center controls located in the center of the instrument panel. Your power windows provide the accessory delay feature, which allows the window switches to operate for up to 10 minutes after the ignition switch is turned to the off position or until any door is opened. The one touch down feature allows you to fully open the driver's window with just a click. Press auto on the rocker control completely down and release quickly. The driver's window will open fully. Depress again to stop the window operation. This function can be deactivated during operation by depressing the top part of the driver's power window control. The controls conveniently located in the rear seat center console allow the rear seat passengers to adjust some audio and climate control features as well as the position of the front passenger seat. Use these controls to select a playing media, to choose a radio station or a specific selection on tape or CD, to adjust the volume, to change the temperature inside the vehicle, to increase or decrease the fan speed, and to move the front passenger seat forward or backward. The reverse sensing system on your vehicle sounds a tone to warn the driver of obstacles near the rear bumper when the reverse gear is selected. The system is automatically enabled when the gear selector is placed in R, reverse, and the ignition is on. The reverse sensing control allows the driver to disable the reverse sensing system only when the ignition is on and the gear selector is in R, reverse. To disable, press the control located in the overhead console. Once disabled, the off indicator will be backlit amber on the control and will remain illuminated until the system is again enabled. Your power deck lid may be opened and closed using the interior trunk release control on the driver's door trim panel, the key fob button, or the keypad on the door. Your vehicle is also equipped with a mechanical interior luggage compartment release handle that provides a means of escape for children and adults in the event they become locked inside the luggage compartment. To open the luggage compartment door from within the luggage compartment, pull the illuminated T-shaped handle and push up on the trunk lid. The T-shaped handle will be located either on the luggage compartment door or inside the luggage compartment near the tail lamps. Left lever on the steering column controls the windshield wipers and washers, which give you a quick way to clean your windshield with or without spraying the washer fluid. For extended wiper blade quality, occasional cleaning of the wiper blades is required. Rotate the windshield wiper control to the desired interval, low or high speed position. The bars of varying length are for intermittent wipers. When in this position, Rotate the control upward for fast intervals and downward for slow intervals. The exterior lamps will illuminate when the ignition is on and the windshield wiper control is in the interval, low or high position. The lights will remain on until 30 seconds after the wipers are turned off. Push, tap the end of the stalk briefly for a single swipe, no wash. Push and hold for three swipes with wash. Push and hold for a longer wash, up to 10 seconds. Mist function. To operate the mist function of the windshield wipers, push and release the windshield washer control quickly. The wipers will cycle one or two times. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. A 
American luxury is more than the prestige of owning an outstanding luxury vehicle. It is an idea that focuses on providing an outstanding ownership experience. To that goal, we provide Lincoln Commitment. In addition to your Lincoln warranty, Lincoln Commitment gives you a comprehensive owner benefits package with services that respond to your driving needs. The Lincoln Commitment Owner Benefits Package includes transportation assistance, 24-hour roadside assistance, emergency expense reimbursement, destination assistance, trip planning service, customer assistance hotline, owner identification card. If you have questions regarding your Lincoln vehicle or Lincoln commitment, call our customer assistance center at 800-521-4140. You will be connected to Lincoln Commitment Headquarters, which is staffed by dedicated Lincoln specialists trained to answer your questions. If you have additional questions, please consult your benefits of owning a Lincoln Guide that came in your glove box. Increase the value of your Lincoln while also enhancing appearance, functionality, and peace of mind by personalizing your vehicle with quality accessories. You can purchase everything from floor mats to auto-dimming compass mirrors directly from your dealer. Each accessory is backed by Lincoln and is guaranteed to help further enhance your ownership experience. If you'd like to learn more about purchasing accessories, click here to visit our website and find a dealer near you. In addition to vehicle accessories, we have also created a unique product collection. Every product from our plush leather lounge chairs to our warm cashmere blankets reflect the quality and design philosophy of your Lincoln vehicle. Click here to visit our website and request a product brochure. To begin your experience, select a feature from the menu to the left. To learn how a feature works, roll your cursor over any of the red highlighted areas. Next, click on the highlight to activate the accompanying text and voiceover. When looking for specific information, use the quick menu located in the upper right corner of the screen. Or if you want to view an entire feature presentation, just choose the play option. Each feature's location can be referenced by the red box and the vehicle graphic located at the bottom of the screen. This vehicle is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS. The ABS helps prevent the wheels from locking up and skidding during hard braking, allowing you more control while steering. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. In an emergency, apply continuous force on the brake to help prevent wheel lockup when braking on slippery surfaces. Do not pump your brakes. A noise from the hydraulic pump motor and pulsation in the pedal may be observed during ABS braking events. Pedal pulsation coupled with noise while braking under panic conditions on loose gravel, bumps, wet or snowy roads is normal and indicates proper functioning of the vehicle's anti-lock brake system. If the vehicle has continuous vibration or shutter in the steering wheel while braking, a qualified service technician should inspect the vehicle. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The ABS operates by detecting the onset of wheel lockup during brake applications and then compensating for this tendency. The wheels are prevented from locking even when the brakes are firmly applied. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. 
In an emergency, apply continuous force on the brake to help prevent wheel lockup when braking on slippery surfaces. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. The child-proof door locks are located on the rear edge of each rear door. When these locks are set, the rear doors cannot be opened from the inside. The rear doors can be opened from the outside when the doors are unlocked. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Move the lock control up to engage the child-proof lock. Move the control down to disengage the child-proof lock. The child-proof door locks must be set separately for each door. Setting the lock for one door will not automatically set the lock for both doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Move the lock control up to engage the child-proof lock. Move the control down. Click. Your vehicle's door locks are electrically powered for your convenience and security. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press the left portion of the control to unlock all the doors and the right portion of the control to lock all the doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The multi-function headlamp control is located to the left of the steering wheel. Your vehicle may be equipped with durable, cost-efficient HID, high-intensity discharge headlamps, which increase visibility on the road and make the glare less blinding to oncoming traffic. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Auto Lamp Control the auto lamp system provides light-sensitive automatic on-off control of the exterior lights normally controlled by the headlamp control. The auto lamp system also keeps the lights on for a pre-selected period of time after the ignition switch is turned to the off position. To turn the auto lamps on, rotate the control counterclockwise. To turn the auto lamps off, rotate the control clockwise to the O off position. To program the amount of time the auto lamps stay on, 1. Turn the ignition to the off position, 2. Turn the headlamp switch to the auto lamp position, 3. Turn the headlamp switch to the O off positions, 4. Turn the ignition to run and then back to off, 5. Turn the headlamp switch to the auto lamp position, 6. Wait the desired amount of time for delay, then turn the headlamp switch to off. 7. Steps 3 through 5 need to be performed within 10 seconds. Auto Lamp Control The auto lamp... Rotate the headlamp control clockwise to the first position to turn on the parking lamps, instrument panel lamps, license plate lamps, and tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Rotate the control clockwise to the second position to turn on the headlamps in addition to the parking lamps, instrument panel lamps, license plate lamps, and tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The panel dimmer control is used to adjust the brightness of the gauges on your instrument panel during headlamp and parking lamp operation. Rotate the thumb wheel to the right to brighten or to the left to dim. Rotate the thumb wheel fully to the right to also turn on the dome lamp. To turn off the dome lamp, 
rotate fully to the left. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Push the turn signal lever toward the instrument panel to activate high beams. Pull the lever toward you to deactivate high beams. Pull the lever toward you slightly to activate and release to deactivate the flash to pass signal. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. The side view mirrors enable you to see upcoming traffic from either side of your vehicle. The power side view mirror control panel is located above the power window control panel on the driver's armrest. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The ignition must be in the ACC or on position to adjust the power side view mirrors. Slide the center switch on the module to L to select the left mirror or to R to select the right mirror. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. After selecting which mirror you would like to adjust using the center switch, move this control in the direction you wish to tilt the mirror. Then, return the center switch to the middle position to lock mirrors in place. Setting the memory positions. Move the side view mirrors to the desired position using the mirror module control and then press the set control located on the driver's door. The set control indicator light will briefly illuminate. While the light is illuminated, a memory mirror position may be programmed at any time by pressing the 1 control or the 2 control, giving you two available programmable settings. Once each of the two positions has been programmed, you may activate them by pressing each memory control once, 1 or 2, or they will automatically activate once the unlock control is pressed on the corresponding 1 or 2 remote transmitter. The memory control can also be used to program set positions for the driver's seat and the power-adjustable foot pedals. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click. Your vehicle may be equipped with an inside rear view mirror with an auto dimming function. This safety feature helps give you peace of mind by reducing glare from the rear view mirror. Reverse Sensing System, Park Aid. The Reverse Sensing System sounds a tone to warn the driver of obstacles near the rear bumper and functions only when R, Reverse Gear, is selected. Before you disable, enable the Reverse Sensing System feature, put the vehicle in R, Reverse. Press the reset control to turn the Park Aid on or off. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Maintaining proper air pressure in your tires helps extend their tread life, 
improve safety, and reduce your vehicle's fuel consumption. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the Play option to view the entire feature presentation. When checking your tire pressure, use an accurate tire pressure gauge. Make sure you check the tire pressure when tires are cold, after the vehicle has been parked for at least one hour, or has been driven less than five kilometers, three miles. Checking your tire pressure when the tires are hot will add approximately three pounds of air pressure. Adjust the tire pressure to the recommended specifications found on the certification label, which is attached to the front door latch pillar on the driver's side. Tire pressure information can also be found on the label inside the gas cap door. When you open the gas cap door, please observe the recommended pressures for front and rear tires on the label. Improperly inflated tires can affect vehicle handling and can fail suddenly, possibly resulting in loss of vehicle control. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To safely operate your vehicle, your tires must be the proper type and size, in good condition, with adequate tread and correctly inflated. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Your vehicle may be equipped with a temporary spare tire. The temporary spare tire for your vehicle is labeled as such. It is smaller than a regular tire and is designed for emergency use only. Replace this tire with a full-size tire as soon as possible. If you use the temporary spare tire continuously or do not follow these precautions, the tire could fail, causing you to lose control of the vehicle, possibly injuring yourself or others. The spare tire is located in the right rear portion of the trunk, stored in an upright position. You can also find the jack in the trunk, next to the wheel well. The lug wrench is attached to the jack. Please note that the air suspension switch must be turned off before using the jack to change a tire. Failure to do so may result in the wheels not lifting off the ground as the vehicle is raised. The off switch is located on the left side of the trunk. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. When to replace your tires. Replace the tires when the tread is worn down to 1 16th of an inch, 2 millimeters, to prevent the vehicle from skidding and hydroplaning. Build in tread wear indicators, or wear bars, which look like narrow strips of smooth rubber across the tread, will appear on the tire when the tread is worn down to 1 16th of an inch, 2 millimeters. When the tire tread wears down to the same height as these wear bars, the tire is worn out and should be replaced. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration regulations require that a certification label be affixed to a vehicle and prescribe where the certification label may be located. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. You should carefully observe the recommended tire inflation pressure found on the safety compliance certification label attached to the front door latch pillar on the driver's side. Failure to follow tire pressure recommendations can adversely affect the way your vehicle handles. Do not exceed the Ford recommended tire pressure, even if it is less than the maximum pressure allowed for the tire. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
The automatic four-speed transmission is electronically controlled for smoother shifting. Overdrive automatically selects a suitable gear for your speed and acceleration and provides the best fuel economy. The right lever on the steering column controls the gear shift and overdrive button. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. This position locks the transmission and prevents the rear wheels from turning. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into P, park. Always set the parking brake fully before shifting into P, park. Make sure the gear shift lever is securely latched in P, park. Turn off the ignition whenever you leave your vehicle. This vehicle is equipped with a brake shift interlock feature that prevents the gear shift lever from being moved from P, park, when the ignition is in the on position, unless the brake pedal is depressed. You may also find that you are able to move the gear shift out of the park position when the ignition is off and the key is in the off position without depressing the brake pedal. Always depress the brake brake pedal before attempting to move the gear shift out of the P, park, position. If you cannot move the gear shift lever out of P, park, with the ignition in the on position and the brake pedal depressed, apply the parking brake, turn the ignition key to lock, and then remove the key. Insert the key and turn it to off. Apply the brake pedal and shift to N, neutral. Start the vehicle. If it is necessary to use the above procedure to move the gear shift lever, it is possible that a fuse has been blown or the vehicle's brake lamps are not operating properly. Do not drive your vehicle until you verify that the brake lamps are working. Refer to the fuses and relays in the roadside emergencies chapter in your owner's guide. Hold the brake pedal down while you move the gear shift lever from P, park, to another position. If you do not hold the brake pedal down, your vehicle may move unexpectedly and injure someone. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. With the gear shift lever in R, reverse, the vehicle will move backward. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into and out of R, reverse. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. With the gear shift lever in N, neutral, the vehicle can be started and is free to roll. Hold the brake pedal down while in this gear. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This is the normal driving position. D, overdrive, can be deactivated by pressing the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever. The transmission control indicator light, TCIL, the word off, will illuminate. Each time the vehicle is started or is shut off and restarted, the transmission will automatically return to normal overdrive mode. You must press the transmission transmission control switch to cancel overdrive operation if driving in overdrive is not desired. To gain acceleration in overdrive or drive OD off when passing another vehicle, push the accelerator to the floor. The transmission will downshift to the appropriate gear, third, second, or first gear. Note, the transmission shift strategy will slightly delay transmission upshift in cold weather to decrease the time required to warm up the engine and produce heat in the passenger compartment. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Use 2, second, to start up on slippery roads or to provide additional engine braking on downgrades. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Use 1, low, to provide maximum engine braking on steep downgrades. 
Up shifts can be made by shifting to 2, second, or to D, overdrive. Selecting 1, low, at higher speeds causes the transmission to shift to a lower gear and will shift to 1, low, after the vehicle decelerates to the proper speed. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. D, OD off, provides more engine braking than D, overdrive, and is useful when you drive with a heavy load, tow a trailer up or down steep hills, or when additional downhill engine braking is desired. D, OD off, is activated by pressing the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever, with the gear shift in the D position. The transmission control indicator light, the word off, will illuminate the transmission operates in gears 1 through 3. To return to D, overdrive mode, press the transmission control switch, TCS. The TCIL, the word off, will no longer be illuminated. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. The trunk in the back of your vehicle provides ample space for storage. Ensure that the trunk is closed and latched before driving your vehicle. Failure to latch the deck lid may cause objects to fall out of the trunk or block the rear view. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The remote trunk release control is located on the driver's door trim panel and can be operated at any time except when your perimeter alarm system is armed. Press the button to open the trunk. You can render the switch inoperable by locking the button with your master key. Your vehicle is also equipped with a mechanical interior luggage compartment release handle that provides a means of escape for children and adults in the event they become locked inside the luggage compartment. To open the luggage compartment door from within the luggage compartment, pull the illuminated T-shaped handle and push up on the trunk lid. The material that the handle is made of will glow for hours in the darkness of the luggage compartment following brief exposure to ambient light. The T-shaped handle will be located either on the luggage compartment door or inside the luggage compartment near the tail lamps. To close the trunk, gently push the trunk down until you feel it latch. The power pull-down latch feature will then complete the full closing of the trunk. Do not slam your trunk or force it downward. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the trunk control on your remote entry device once to open the trunk. The remote entry system allows you to open the trunk while the ignition is in any position. However, if the ignition is in the on position and the gear shift is in D, drive, the trunk will only open if the vehicle is moving 5 km per hour, 3 miles per hour, or slower. To close the trunk, gently push the trunk down until you feel it latch. The power pull-down latch feature will then complete the full closing of the trunk. Do not slam your trunk or force it downward. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To release, open the trunk using your keyless entry system. Enter the factory set or personal code the driver's door will unlock and then press the 5-6 control within 5 seconds of entering your personal code. To close the trunk, gently push the trunk down until you feel it latch. The power pull-down latch feature will then complete the full closing of the trunk. Do not slam your trunk or force it downward. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Your vehicle may be equipped with a power trunk controlled by the interior trunk control.
Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Your vehicle may be equipped with a power trunk controlled by the interior trunk control, the key fob, or the keypad on the door. Make sure all persons are clear of the luggage compartment area before using the power trunk control. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. To release, open the trunk using the keyless entry system. Enter the factory set or personal code the driver's door will unlock and then press the 5-6 control within 5 seconds of entering your personal code. Pressing the control again will close the deck lid. You may need to re-enter your personal code again. After entering the factory set or personal code, you can unlock all doors by pressing the 3-4 control and open-close the power deck lid by pressing the 5-6 control, as long as the controls are pressed within 5 seconds of each other. If anything obstructs the power trunk while it is closed, the trunk will automatically reverse to the open position, provided it meets sufficient resistance. The trunk will close with the next press of the keypad on the door. If the battery is disconnected, discharged, or a new battery is installed, the power deck lid needs to be reset. To reset the power deck lid, reconnect the battery with the trunk closed. Next, power activate the trunk with the keypad on the door to the full open position and then power activate the trunk with the same power source to the fully closed position. The power trunk is now reset. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the trunk control on your remote entry device twice to open the trunk and twice to close it. The remote entry system allows you to open the trunk while the ignition is in any position. However, if the ignition is in the on position and the gear shift is in D, drive, the trunk will only open if the vehicle is moving 5 km per hour or 3 miles per hour or slower. If anything obstructs the power trunk while it is closing, the trunk will automatically reverse to the open position, provided it meets sufficient resistance the trunk will close with the next press of the key fob button. If the battery is disconnected, discharged, or a new battery is installed, the power deck lid needs to be reset. To reset the power deck lid, reconnect the battery with the trunk closed. Next, power activate the trunk with your remote entry device to the full open position, and then power activate the trunk with the same power source to the fully closed position. The power trunk is now reset. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote trunk release control is located on the driver's door trim panel and can be operated at any time except when your perimeter alarm system is armed. Press the button once to open the trunk. Press it again to close you can render the switch inoperable by locking the button with your master key. If anything obstructs the power trunk while it is closing, the trunk will automatically reverse to the open position, provided it meets sufficient resistance. The trunk will close with the next press of the interior trunk control. If the battery is disconnected, discharged, or a new battery is installed, the power deck lid needs to be reset. To reset the power deck lid, reconnect the battery with the trunk closed. Next, power activate the trunk with the remote trunk release control to the full open position. And then power activate the trunk with the same power source to the fully closed position. The power trunk is now reset. Your vehicle is also equipped with a mechanical interior luggage compartment release handle that provides a means of escape for children and adults in the event they become locked inside the luggage compartment. To open the luggage compartment door from within the luggage compartment, pull the illuminated T-shaped handle and push up on the trunk lid. The material that the handle is made of will glow for hours in the darkness of the luggage compartment following brief exposure to ambient light. The T-shaped handle will be located either on the luggage compartment door 
or inside the luggage compartment near the tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Keyless Entry System if equipped. You can lock or unlock the vehicle doors and unlatch the trunk without using the key. The keyless entry pad is located outside of the driver's door. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. You can find the factory set code on the owner's wallet card in the glove compartment, taped to the computer module and at your dealer. In addition, you can program your own five digit personal code. To program your code, one, enter the factory set code, two, Press the 1-2 control within 5 seconds of entering the factory set code. 3. Enter your personal 5-digit code. Each number must be entered within 5 seconds of each other. 4. Enter a 6th digit to indicate which personality feature should be recalled by the personal code. 1-2 recalls driver personality 1. 3-4 recalls driver personality 2. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 0 do not recall a driver personality. All of the vehicle doors will lock and unlock to confirm programming of the new code. To unlock the driver's door, enter either the factory set code or your personal code. Each digit must be pressed within 5 seconds of the prior digit. The interior lamps will also illuminate. To unlock all doors, enter the factory set code or your personal code. Driver's door unlocks and then press the 3-4 control within 5 seconds. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To release, open the trunk, enter the factory set code or your personal code. The driver's door will unlock and then press the 5-6 control within 5 seconds of entering the security code. If your vehicle is equipped with the optional power deck lid, pressing the 5-6 control again will close the trunk. You may need to re-enter the keypad code again. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. It is not necessary to enter the factory set or personal code before locking all doors. To lock the doors, press the 7-8 control and the 9-0 control at the same time. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote entry system allows you to lock or unlock all vehicle doors, as well as open the trunk without using a key. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The remote entry lock feature operates in any ignition position. Press this control to lock all of the doors. The parking lamps, tail lamps, will flash to confirm the doors are closed and locked. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote entry unlock feature operates in any ignition position. Press this control to unlock the driver's door. The interior lamps will illuminate to verify that the door has been successfully unlocked. Press this control a second time within seconds to unlock all of the doors. Illuminated Entry 
The lamps illuminate when the remote entry system is used to unlock the door or doors. The system automatically turns off after 25 seconds or when the ignition is turned to the start or ACC position. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote entry lock feature operates in any ignition position. However, if the ignition is in the on position and the gear shift is in D, drive, the trunk will only open if the vehicle is moving 5 km per hour, 3 miles per hour, or slower. Press the control to open the trunk. If your vehicle is fitted with the optional power deck lid, press the control twice to open the trunk and twice to close it. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The panic control feature only operates with the ignition in the off position. Press this control to activate the alarm. To deactivate the alarm, press this control again or turn the ignition to the ACC, on or start positions. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Securolock. As an engine immobilization system, the Securolock passive anti-theft system prevents the engine from being started unless a coded key programmed to your vehicle is used. This system is not compatible with non-Ford aftermarket remote start systems. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Your vehicle is supplied with three coded keys. Only a coded key will start your vehicle. Spare coded keys can be purchased from your dealership. Your dealership can program your key or, to do it yourself, refer to the Programming Spare Keys chapter in your owner's guide. The use of the wrong type of coded key or of an unprogrammed key may lead to a no-start condition. Therefore, your programmed keys cannot be copied. To purchase spare coded keys, contact your dealership. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The vehicle is armed immediately after switching the ignition to the one, off lock position. The indicator light on the instrument panel will flash every two seconds when the vehicle is armed. Switching the ignition to the three, on position, with a coded key disarms the vehicle. The indicator light will glow for three seconds and then go out. If the light stays on for an extended period or flashes rapidly, have the system serviced by your dealership or a qualified technician. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature The left lever on the steering column controls the windshield wipers and washers, which give you a quick way to clean your windshield with or without spraying the washer fluid. For extended wiper blade quality, occasional cleaning of the wiper blades is required. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Rotate the windshield wiper control to the desired interval, low or high speed position. The bars of varying length are for intermittent wipers. When in this position, rotate the control upward for fast intervals and downward for slow intervals. The exterior lamps will illuminate when the ignition is on and the windshield wiper control is in the interval, low or high position. 
The lights will remain on until 30 seconds after the wipers are turned off. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Push, tap the end of the stalk briefly for a single swipe, no wash. Push and hold for three swipes with wash. Push and hold for a longer wash, up to 10 seconds. Mist function. To operate the mist function of the windshield wipers, push and release the windshield washer control quickly. The wipers will cycle one or two times. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Rotate the windshield wiper control to the desired interval, low or high speed position. The bars of varying length are... To begin your experience, select a feature from the menu to the left. The foot pedal control is located on the instrument panel Never adjust the accelerator and brake pedal while your feet are on the pedals or while the vehicle is moving. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press and hold the rocker control to adjust the accelerator and brake pedal. Press the bottom of the control to adjust the pedals toward you. Press the top of the control to adjust the pedals away from you. The adjustment allows for approximately 65 millimeters, 2.5 inches, of maximum travel. The accelerator and brake pedals should only be adjusted when the vehicle is stopped and the gear shift lever is in the P, park position. Setting the memory positions. Move the adjustable foot pedals to the desired position using the mirror module control and then press the set control located on the driver's door. The set control indicator light will briefly illuminate. While the light is illuminated, a memory pedal position may be programmed at any time by pressing the 1 control or the 2 control, giving you two available programmable settings. Once each of the two positions has been programmed, you may activate them by pressing each memory control once, 1 or 2, or they will automatically activate once the unlock control is pressed on the corresponding one or two remote transmitter. The memory control can also be used to program set positions for the driver's seat and the power side view mirrors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Located on the dashboard between the center air vents, your audio system enhances your listening experience with optimum quality sound sources, AM FM stereo and CD player. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Volume. Press the control to turn the audio system on or off. Turn the control to raise or lower volume. Your audio system is equipped with the speed sensitive volume feature. With it, the radio volume automatically changes with the vehicle speed to compensate for road and wind noise. The recommended level for speed sensitive volume is from level one through level three. Level zero turns the speed sensitive volume off and level seven is the maximum setting. To adjust the volume compensation level, press menu repeatedly until it appears in the display. Use the cell text control to increase, decrease, or turn off the volume compensation. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. AM FM. The AM FM select control works in radio and CD modes. 
When in the radio mode, this control allows you to select AM or FM frequency bands. Press the control to switch between AM, FM1, or FM2 memory preset stations. When in the CD mode, press the control to stop CD play and begin radio play. Using the AM-FM select control with the six memory preset controls, numbered 1 to 6, you can store up to six preset AM stations and 12 FM stations, six in FM1 and six in FM2. To set memory preset stations, one, select the frequency band with the AM-FM select control, two, select a station, refer to tune or seek function for more information on selecting a station. Three, press and hold a memory preset control until the sound returns indicating the station is held in memory on the control you selected. Four, display will indicate preset saved. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. CD. To begin CD play with a CD loaded, press the CD control. The first track of the disc will begin playing. After that, CD play will begin where it stopped last. SAT Shuffle Scan Your system comes equipped with satellite ready capability. The kit to enable the satellite reception is available through your Ford dealer. Detailed satellite instructions are included with the dealer installed kit. The shuffle feature works in the CD mode and plays all tracks on the current disc in random order. Press the SHUFF control to start this feature. Random order play will continue until the SHUFF control is pressed again. The scan function works in the radio or CD mode. When in the radio mode, press the scan control to hear a brief sampling of all listenable stations on the frequency band. Press the scan control again to stop the scan mode. When in the CD mode, press the scan control to hear a short sampling of all selections on the CD. The CD scans in a forward direction, wrapping back to the first track at the end of the CD. To stop on a particular selection, press the control again. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Seek. The SEEK function control works in the radio or CD mode. When in the radio mode, press the left side of the SEEK control to find the next listenable station down the frequency band. Press the right side of the SEEK control to find the next listenable station up the frequency band. When in the CD mode, press the left side of the SEEK control to seek the previous selection. Press the right side of the SEEK control to seek forward to the next selection. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Tune. The tune control works in the radio mode only. When in the radio mode, press the left side of the tune control to manually move to the next frequency down the band. Hold the control to move through the frequencies quickly. Press the right side of the tune control to move to the next frequency up the band. Hold for quick movement. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Mute. Press the mute control to mute the playing media. Press the mute control again to return to the playing media or turn the volume control. Eject CD. Press this control to stop and eject a CD. Balance. The balance feature is used to adjust sound distribution between the right and left speakers. Press BAL, then press the right or left portion of the cell text control to shift the sound. Fade. In conjunction with the cell text control, the bottom portion of the rocker control adjusts the speaker sound between the front and rear speakers. Press the fade control once 
and then press the right or left portion of the cell text control to make adjustments. Base. In conjunction with the cell text control, the top portion of the rocker control allows you to increase or decrease the audio system's bass output. Press the bass control once, and then press the right or left portion of the cell text control to increase or decrease the level of bass output. Treble. In conjunction with the cell text control, the bottom portion of the rocker control allows you to increase or decrease the audio system's treble output. Press the treb control once, and then the right or left portion of the cell text control to increase or decrease the level of treble output. Auto set. Auto set allows you to set strong radio stations without losing your original manually set preset stations. This feature is helpful on trips when you travel between cities with different radio stations. To start auto set memory preset, 1. Press the menu control until auto set appears in the display. 2. Press the cell text control to toggle on or off. 3. When the first six strong stations are filled, the stations stored in the memory preset control 1 will start playing. If there are fewer than six strong stations available on the frequency band, the remaining memory preset controls will all store the last strong station available. These stations are temporarily stored in the memory preset controls until deactivated and are accessed in the same manner as your original presets. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Comp. Compression brings soft and loud CD passages together for a more consistent listening level. Press the menu control repeatedly until compression status is displayed. Press the cell text control to enable the compression feature when compress off is displayed. Press the cell text control again to disable the feature when compress on is displayed. RDS Radio Data System RDS Press menu repeatedly until RDS on or RDS off appears in the display. Use the cell text control to turn the feature on or off. Once the RDS feature is activated, press the menu control again to scroll through the following selections. Program type. When find program type is displayed, use the cell text control to select program types. Classic, country, info, jazz R&B, religious, rock, soft, and top 40. Press seek or scan to search for the requested music category. Show type. When show is displayed, use the cell control to select type. The display shows the program type or name. The display shows the call letters of the station. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Using the AM-FM select control with the six memory preset control, numbered one to six, you can store up to six preset AM stations and 12 FM stations, six in FM1 and six in FM2. To set memory preset stations, one, select the frequency band with the AM-FM select control. Two, select a station. Refer to Tune or Seek function for more information on selecting a station. 3. Press and hold a memory preset control until the sound returns, indicating the station is held in memory on the control you selected. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select. Located on the dashboard between the center air vents, your audio system enhances your listening experience with a variety of optimum quality sound sources, AM-FM stereo, cassette, and CD player. 
To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Volume. Press the control to turn the audio system on or off. Turn the control to raise or lower volume. Your audio system is equipped with the speed sensitive volume feature. With it, the radio volume automatically changes with the vehicle's speed to compensate for road and wind noise. The recommended level for speed sensitive volume is from level 1 through level 3. Level 0 turns the speed sensitive volume off and level 7 is the maximum setting. To adjust the volume compensation level with the radio on, press the menu control and use the cell control to increase, decrease, or shut off the volume compensation. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Eject CD. Press this control to stop and eject a CD. Tape Sat. The left portion of the rocker control allows you to engage CD or tape play. To begin CD play with a CD loaded, press the CD control. The first track of the disc will begin playing. After that, CD play will begin where it stopped last. To begin tape play with a tape loaded, press the tape control. Press again during rewind or fast forward to stop the rewind or fast forward function. The right portion of the rocker control allows you to engage your vehicle's satellite ready capability. The kit to enable the satellite reception is available through your dealer. Detailed satellite instructions are included with the dealer installed kit. Eject tape. Press this control to stop and eject a tape. AM FM. The AM FM control allows you to engage radio play or to select AM or FM frequency bands. The AM FM select control works in radio, tape, and CD modes. When in the radio mode, this control allows you to select AM or FM frequency bands. Press the control to switch between AM, FM1, or FM2 memory preset stations. When in the tape mode, press this control to stop tape play and begin radio play. When in the CD mode, press this control to stop CD play and begin radio play. Using the AM-FM select control with the six memory preset control numbered one to six, you can store up to six preset AM stations and 12 FM stations, six in FM1 and six in FM2. To set memory preset stations, 1. Select the frequency band with the AM-FM select control. 2. Select a station. Refer to tune or seek function for more information on selecting a station. 3. Press and hold a memory preset control until the sound returns, indicating the station is held in memory on the control you selected. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Scan. The scan function works in the radio, tape, or CD mode. When in radio mode, press the scan control to hear a brief sampling of all listenable stations on the frequency band. Press the scan control again to stop the scan mode. When in the tape mode, press the scan control to hear a short sampling of all selections on the tape. The tape scans in a forward direction. To stop on a particular selection, press the control again. When in CD mode, press the scan control to hear a short sampling of all selections on the CD. The CD scans in a forward direction, wrapping back to the first track at the end of the CD. To stop on a particular selection, press the control again. Seek. The Seek function control works in the radio, tape, or CD mode. When in the radio mode,
press the left side of the seat control to find the next listenable station down the frequency band. Press the right side of the seat control to find the next listenable station up the frequency band. When in the tape mode, press the left side of the seek control to seek the previous selection on the tape. Press the right side of the seek control to seek forward to the next selection on the tape. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Tune Cat. The Tune Cat control works in the radio mode only. When in the radio mode, Press the left side of the Tune Cat control to manually move down the band. Hold the control to move through the frequencies quickly. Press the right side of the Tune control to manually move up the band. Hold for quick movement. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Mute. Press the mute control to mute the playing media. Press the mute control again to return to the playing media or turn the volume control. Bass. In conjunction with the cell text control, the top portion of the rocker control allows you to increase or decrease the audio system's bass output. Press the bass control once and then press the right or left portion of the cell text control to increase or decrease the level of treble output. Treble. In conjunction with the cell text control, the bottom portion of the rocker control allows you to increase or decrease the audio system's treble output. Press the treb control once, and then the right or left portion of the cell control to make adjustments. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Balance. The balance feature is used to adjust sound distribution between the right and left speakers. Press BAL, then press the right or left portion of the cell text control to shift the sound. Fade. In conjunction with the cell text control, the bottom portion of the rocker control adjusts the speaker sound between the front and rear speakers. Press the fade control once, and then press the right or left portion of the cell text control to increase or decrease the level of bass output. Auto Set The Auto Set allows you to set strong radio stations without losing your original manually set preset stations. This feature is helpful on trips when you travel between cities with different radio stations. To start Auto Set Memory Preset, 1. Press the menu control until Auto Set appears in the display. 2. Press the cell text control to toggle on or off. 3. When the first six strong stations are filled, the station stored in the memory preset control 1 will start playing. If there are fewer than six strong stations available on the frequency band, the remaining memory preset controls will all store the last strong station available. These stations are temporarily stored in the memory preset controls until deactivated and are accessed in the same manner as your original presets. Comp. Compression brings soft and loud CD passages together for a more consistent listening level. Press the menu control repeatedly until compression status is displayed. Press the cell text control to enable the compression feature when compress off is displayed. Press the cell control again to disable the feature when compress on is displayed. RDS. The radio data system RDS control allows you to select a program type from RDS equipped FM radio stations. Press menu repeatedly until RDS on or RDS off appears in the display. Use the cell text control to turn the feature on or off. Once the RDS feature is activated, press the menu control again to scroll through the following selections. Program type. When find program type is displayed, use the cell text control to select the program type. 
With the feature on, use the Seek or Scan control to find the desired program type from the following selections. Classic, Country, Info, Jazz R&B, Religious, Rock, Soft, and Top 40. Show Type. When Show is displayed, use the Cell Text Control to select Type. The display shows the program type or name. The display shows the call letters of the station. Side 1, 2. Press the Side 1, 2 control to play the alternate side of a tape. This control is also one of the six radio preset controls. Dolby Noise Reduction operates in tape mode. Dolby Noise Reduction reduces the amount of hiss and static during tape playback. Press the menu control until Dolby BXX appears in the display. Press the cell control to toggle on or off. Dolby Noise Reduction System is manufactured under license from Dolby Laboratories Licensing Corporation. Dolby and the double D symbol are registered trademarks of Dolby Laboratories Licensing Corporation. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Using the AM-FM select control with the six memory preset control numbered one to six, you can store up to six preset AM stations and 12 FM stations, six in FM1 and six in FM2. To set memory preset stations, one, select the frequency band with the AM-FM select control. Two, select a station. Refer to tune or seek function for more information on selecting a station. Three, press and hold a memory preset control until the sound returns, indicating the station is held in memory on the control you selected. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Fast forward. Pressing the right portion of the control will engage the fast forward function. In the tape mode, the tape direction will automatically reverse when the end of the tape is reached. In CD mode, pressing the control fast forwards the CD within the current track. This control is also one of the six radio preset controls. Rewind. Press to engage the rewind function. In tape mode, radio play will continue until the rewind is stopped by pressing the tape control or the beginning of the tape is reached. In CD mode, pressing the REW control rewinds the CD within the current track. This control is also one of the six radio preset controls. Shuffle. The shuffle feature works in the CD mode and plays all tracks on the current disc in random order. Press the SHUFF control to start this feature. Random order play will continue until the SHUFF control is pressed again. This control is also one of the six radio preset controls. The optional rear seat radio controls allow the rear seat passengers to make remote adjustments to the audio system. The rear seat audio control panel is located on the rear center console in your vehicle. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. When in the radio mode, press the next control to select a preset station from memory. When in the tape and CD modes, press the Next control to listen to the next selection. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the mode control to select between different playing media, AM, FM1, FM2, tape, or CD if equipped. 
For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press volume up or down in any mode to adjust the volume. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the memory preset controls 3 and 5 simultaneously on the front audio controls to lock out the rear seat controls. They will remain disabled until the front seat passengers enable them again by simultaneously pressing the 3 and 5 preset controls. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. When in the radio mode, press the Next control to select a preset station from memory. When in the tape and CD modes, press the Next control to listen to the next selection. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press volume up or down in any mode to adjust the volume. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. The dual electronic automatic temperature control system will maintain a selected temperature setting and automatically control the fan speed and airflow location. The dual temperature zone feature allows the driver and front passenger to set their own temperature for individual comfort. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. To control the temperature for the driver, select the desired temperature by pressing the driver temperature controls. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the fan speed control to manually adjust the fan speed. When the fan speed is controlled while in automatic operation, the auto indicator will remain lit and the system will remain in the automatic mode. To return to automatic fan operation, press auto. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press EXT to display the outside air temperature. It will be displayed until EXT is pressed again. If the interior temperature or fan speed are adjusted or a manual override is selected while the outside temperature is being displayed, the new temperature, fan speed or override control will appear in the display window for 4 seconds and the outside temperature will then return to the display window. The outside temperature reading is most accurate when the vehicle is moving. Higher readings may be displayed when the vehicle is not moving. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the FC control to switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius temperature on the DEATC display. The temperature in Celsius will be displayed in half degree increments. The English metric EM control on the message center, if equipped, and the trip computer will not change the temperature display. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
Press this control to manually activate or deactivate the air conditioning. The AC will only function if the outside temperature is above 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. In defrost, the AC will operate automatically if the outside temperature is above 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The AC indicator will not illuminate. When the air conditioning is controlled while in the automatic operation mode, the auto indicator will remain lit. To return to automatic air conditioning operation, press auto. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press this control to manually enable or disable recirculation operation in all modes except defrost. When the air conditioning is operating, recirculated air helps to reduce the amount of time required to cool the inside of the vehicle. Recirculated air can also help reduce undesirable odors from entering the vehicle. The recirculation control cannot be selected in defrost as interior fogging may occur. To reduce the risk of fogging while in the floor and floor and defrost modes, the recirculation control can be enabled for approximately four minutes and the recirculated air indicator will be lit. Afterwards, the DEATC will automatically disable the recirculated air and the recirculated air indicator will not be lit. When the recirculated air is controlled while in the automatic operation, the auto indicator will remain lit. To return to automatic air conditioning operation, press auto. Under cold or damp conditions, do not leave the climate control system in the recirculated air mode for extended periods of time as this may cause interior fogging of the windows. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the dual control to enable or disable the dual zone temperature feature. When dual is pressed, the display window will indicate the current temperature setting for the driver and the last temperature setting for the passenger. In addition to the dual control, the passenger may manually enable the dual zone temperature feature by pressing the passenger temperature control. When dual has been enabled, the dual indicator will be illuminated. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To control the temperature for the passenger, select the desired temperature by pressing the passenger temperature control. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press this control to manually enable or disable the rear window defroster in all modes. When operating, the rear defrost indicator will be lit. After approximately 10 minutes of the operation, the climate control system will automatically turn off the rear defrost operation. To manually turn off the defroster before 10 minutes have passed, push the control again. The rear window defroster switch also activates the standard exterior mirror defrost feature. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This manual override control distributes outside air through the windshield defroster ducts and the side window demisters. The AC will only function if the outside temperature is above approximately 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the AC indicator will not be lit. This mode will clear ice and fog from the windshield. To return to full automatic control, press the auto control. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This manual override control distributes outside or recirculated air through the floor ducts, windshield defroster ducts, and the side window demisters. The AC will only function if the outside temperature is above approximately 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The air distributed through the floor ducts will be slightly warmer than that sent to the windshield defroster ducts and the side window demisters. 
To return to full automatic control, press the auto control. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This manual override control distributes outside or recirculated air through the floor ducts and side window demisters. The AC will only function if the outside temperature is above approximately 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. To return to full automatic control, press Auto. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This manual override control distributes outside or recirculated air through the instrument panel registers and the floor ducts. The AC will only function if the outside temperature is above approximately 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The air distributed through the floor ducts will be slightly warmer than that sent to the instrument panel registers. To return to full automatic control, press Auto. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This manual override control distributes outside or recirculated air through the instrument panel registers. The AC will only function if the outside temperature is above approximately 2 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. The system will allow some airflow through the floor ducts. To return to full automatic control, press Auto. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. In this mode, outside air is shut out and the fan will not operate. This mode will reduce undesirable odors from entering the vehicle, but may increase the possibility of interior window fogging. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press Auto and select the desired temperature. The system will either heat or cool the vehicle to achieve the selected temperature. The system will automatically determine fan speed, airflow location, and whether outside or recirculated air is required. When in the automatic operation mode and weather conditions require heat, air will be sent to the floor ducts. However, until the engine is warmed, the fan speed will operate at low speed and the airflow will be directed to the windshield defroster ducts. Upon engine warm-up, the system will automatically direct airflow to the floor ducts and operate the required fan speed to achieve the selected temperature. If unusual conditions exist, for example window fogging, etc., the manual overrides allow you to select the airflow locations and fan speed. To return to automatic operation, press Auto. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Located in the rear seat center console, the auxiliary climate controls provide increased capacity to quickly heat or cool the vehicle. The main climate controls must be on in order for the auxiliary climate controls to work. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press temperature up or down to adjust the temperature. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press fan up or down to adjust the fan speed. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the memory preset controls three and five simultaneously on the front audio controls to lock out
the rear seat controls. They will remain disabled until the front seat passengers enable them again by simultaneously pressing the three and five preset controls. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The buttons to the right of the center pad on the steering wheel allow you to operate select climate control features. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press temperature up or down to adjust the temperature. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The multifunction headlamp control is located to the left of the steering wheel. Your vehicle may be equipped with durable, cost-efficient HID, high-intensity discharge headlamps, which increase visibility on the road and make the glare less blinding to oncoming traffic. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Auto Lamp Control The Auto Lamp System provides light-sensitive automatic on-off control of the exterior lights normally controlled by the headlamp control. The auto lamp system also keeps the lights on for a pre-selected period of time after the ignition switch is turned to the off position. To turn the auto lamps on, rotate the control counterclockwise. To turn the auto lamps off, rotate the control clockwise to the O off position. To program the amount of time the auto lamps stay on, 1. Turn the ignition to the off position, 2. Turn the headlamp switch to the auto lamp position. 3. Turn the headlamp switch to the O off positions. 4. Turn the ignition to run and then back to off. 5. Turn the headlamp switch to the auto lamp position. 6. Wait the desired amount of time for delay, then turn the headlamp switch to off. 7. Steps 3 through 5 need to be performed within 10 seconds. Rotate the headlamp control clockwise to the first position to turn on the parking lamps, instrument panel lamps, license plate lamps, and tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Rotate the control clockwise to the second position to turn on the headlamps in addition to the parking lamps, instrument panel lamps, license plate lamps, and tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The panel dimmer control is used to adjust the brightness of the gauges on your instrument panel during headlamp and parking lamp operation. Rotate the thumb wheel to the right to brighten or to the left to dim. Rotate the thumb wheel fully to the right to also turn on the dome lamp. To turn off the dome lamp, rotate fully to the left. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Push the turn signal lever toward the instrument panel to activate high beams. Pull the lever toward you to deactivate high beams. Pull the lever toward you slightly to activate and release to deactivate the flash to pass signal. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
Message Center. The electronic message center located on your instrument cluster displays important vehicle information through a constant monitor of vehicle systems. This system only works when the ignition is in the on position. Select. Press this control to select functions shown in the setup menu. Reset. Press this control to reset functions shown in the setup menu. Info menu. Press the info control to display the following. Trip odometer, odometer, distance to empty, average fuel economy, instantaneous fuel economy. Distance to empty, DTE. The distance to empty function estimates approximately how far you can drive with the fuel remaining in your tank under normal driving conditions. Remember to turn the ignition off when refueling your vehicle to allow this feature to correctly detect the added fuel. The DTE function will display low fuel level and sound a tone for one second when you have approximately 50 miles, 80 kilometers to empty. If you reset this warning message, this display and tone will return within 10 minutes or 10 miles. Average Fuel Economy, AFE. The AFE function displays your average fuel economy in liters or miles gallon. It is important to press the reset control, press and hold reset for two seconds in order to reset the function after setting the speed control to get accurate highway fuel economy readings. Instantaneous fuel economy. This function will display your fuel economy as a bar graph, ranging from poor economy to excellent economy. Your vehicle must be moving to calculate instantaneous fuel economy. When your vehicle is not moving, this function shows arrow down, one or no bars illuminated. Instantaneous fuel economy cannot be reset. Setup menu. Press the setup control for the following displays. System check, display, odometer, speedometer, text size, normal, large, units, English, metric, language, compass zone, calibration, oil minder start value. System check. The system check function causes the message center to cycle through each of the systems being monitored. For each of the monitored systems, the message center will indicate either an OK message or a warning message for three seconds. Pressing the select control cycles the message center through each of the systems being monitored. Display type. Select this function from the setup menu. Press the select control to change the display. Text size. Select this function from the setup menu. Press the select control to change the text size. Units, English metric. Select this function from the setup menu for the current units to be displayed. Press the select control to change from English to metric. Language. Select this function from the setup menu for the current language to be displayed. Pressing the select control cycles the message center through each of the language choices. Compass display. The compass reading may be affected when you drive near large buildings, bridges, power lines, and powerful broadcast antenna. Magnetic or metallic objects placed in, on, or near the vehicle may also affect compass accuracy. Usually, when something affects the compass readings, the compass will correct itself after a few days of operating your vehicle in normal conditions. If the compass still appears to be inaccurate, a manual calibration may be necessary. Please see your owner's guide for more information. Oil Minder Start Value. Select this function from the setup menu for the current display mode. Press the select control to change oil value.
Your vehicle's windows are electrically powered and can be controlled with a simple switch. The window lock on the driver's armrest, when activated, prevents the passenger's windows from raising and lowering. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press Auto completely down and release quickly. The driver's window will open fully. Depress again to stop window operation. The One Touch Down function can be deactivated during operation by depressing the top part of the driver's power window control. A dead battery or loss of power condition while the window glass is moving will result in an inoperative One Touch Down feature. If this should occur, the window glass will operate as a standard power window. The one touch down feature will be restored when the glass reaches the full up position. Accessory Delay With accessory delay, the window switches may be used for up to 10 minutes after the ignition switch is turned to the off position or until any door is opened. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the bottom portion of the rocker switch to open windows. Press the top portion of the rocker switch to close windows. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The window lock feature allows only the driver to operate the power windows. Activate the window lock when you have children in the car so they don't injure themselves by operating the windows unintentionally. To lock out all the window controls except for the drivers, press the left side of the control. Press the right side to restore the window controls. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Speed control. The speed control allows you to maintain a set speed at or above 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour, without keeping your foot on the accelerator pedal. To interact with this feature, simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Note, vehicle speed may vary momentarily when driving up and down a steep hill. If the vehicle speed increases above the set speed on a downhill, you may want to apply the brakes to reduce the speed. If the vehicle speed decreases more than 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers per hour, below your set speed on an uphill, your speed control will disengage. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To resume a set speed, press the resume control and release it. This will automatically return the vehicle to the previously set speed. The resume control will not work if the vehicle speed is not faster than 30 miles per hour, 48 kilometers per hour. There are two ways to set a higher speed. Press and hold the set plus control until you get to the desired speed then release the control. You can also use the set plus control to operate the tap up function. Press and release this control to increase the vehicle set speed in small amounts by one mile per hour, 1.6 kilometers per hour. Use the accelerator pedal to get to the desired speed. When the vehicle reaches that speed, press and release the set plus control. There are two ways to reduce a set speed. Press and hold the set minus control until you get to the desired speed, then release the control. You can also use the set minus control to operate the tap down function. Press and release this control to decrease the vehicle set speed in small amounts by one mile per hour, 1.6 kilometers per hour. Use the brake pedal until the desired speed is reached. Press the set plus control. Note. Vehicle speed may vary momentarily when driving up and down a steep hill. If the vehicle speed increases above the set speed on a downhill, 
you may want to apply the brakes to reduce the speed. If the vehicle speed decreases more than 10 miles per hour, 16 kilometers per hour, below your set speed on an uphill, your speed control will disengage. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To set a speed, press the on control and release it. Accelerate to the desired speed, then press set plus and release it. Take your foot off the accelerator pedal. The message speed control will be displayed in the message center. To disengage the speed control, depress the brake pedal or press off. When you turn it off, set speed memory is erased. Your vehicle is equipped with the traction control system. This system helps you maintain the stability and steering control of your vehicle. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The traction control system allows your vehicle to make better use of available traction on slippery surfaces. The system is a driver aid that makes your vehicle easier to handle, primarily on snow, ice-covered, and gravel roads. The traction control system operates by detecting and controlling wheel spin. The system borrows many of the electronic and mechanical elements already present in the anti-lock braking system, ABS. During traction control operation, the traction control active light will illuminate you may hear an electric motor type of sound coming from the engine compartment, and the engine will not rev up when you push further on the accelerator. This is normal system behavior. The traction control system will revert to the on position every time the ignition is turned from off to run. If you should become stuck in snow or ice or on a very slippery road surface, try switching the traction control system off. This may allow excess wheel spin to dig the vehicle out and enable a successful rocking maneuver. The traction control on-off switch is located on the left side of the instrument panel. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The automatic four-speed transmission is electronically controlled for smoother shifting. Overdrive automatically selects a suitable gear for your speed and acceleration and provides the best fuel economy. The right lever on the steering column controls the gear shift and overdrive button. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. This position locks the transmission and prevents the rear wheels from turning. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into P, park. Always set the parking brake fully before shifting into P, park. Make sure the gear shift lever is securely latched in P, park. Turn off the ignition whenever you leave your vehicle. This vehicle is equipped with a brake shift interlock feature that prevents the gear shift lever from being moved from P, park, when the ignition is in the on position, unless the brake pedal is depressed. You may also find that you are able to move the gear shift out of the park position when the ignition is off and the key is in the off position without depressing the brake pedal. Always depress the brake pedal before attempting to move the gear shift out of the P, park, position. If you cannot move the gear shift lever out of P, park, with the ignition in the on position and the brake pedal depressed, apply the parking brake, turn the ignition key to lock, and then remove the key. Insert the key and turn it to off. Apply the brake pedal and shift to N, neutral. Start the vehicle. If it is necessary to use the above procedure to move the gearshift lever, 
it is possible that a fuse has been blown or the vehicle's brake lamps are not operating properly. Do not drive your vehicle until you verify that the brake lamps are working. Refer to the fuses and relays in the Roadside Emergencies chapter in your owner's guide. Hold the brake pedal down while you move the gear shift lever from P, park, to another position. If you do not hold the brake pedal down, your vehicle may move unexpectedly and injure someone. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. With the gear shift lever in R, reverse, the vehicle will move backward. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into and out of R, reverse. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. With the gear shift lever in N, neutral, the vehicle can be started and is free to roll. Hold the brake pedal down while in this gear. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This is the normal driving position. D, overdrive, can be deactivated by pressing the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever. The transmission control indicator light, TCIL, the word off, will illuminate. Each time the vehicle is started or is shut off and restarted, the transmission will automatically return to normal overdrive mode. You must press the transmission control switch to cancel overdrive operation if driving in overdrive is not desired. To gain acceleration in overdrive or drive OD off when passing another vehicle, push the accelerator to the floor. The transmission will downshift to the appropriate gear, third, second, or first gear. Note, the transmission shift strategy will slightly delay transmission upshift in cold weather to decrease the time required to warm up the engine and produce heat in the passenger compartment. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Use 2, second, to start up on slippery roads or to provide additional engine braking on downgrades. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Use 1, low, to provide maximum engine braking on steep downgrades. Upshifts can be made by shifting to 2, second, or to D, overdrive. Selecting 1, low, at higher speeds causes the transmission to shift to a lower gear and will shift to 1, low, after the vehicle decelerates to the proper speed. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. D, OD off, provides more engine braking than D, overdrive and is useful when you drive with a heavy load, tow a trailer up or down steep hills, or when additional downhill engine braking is desired. D, OD off, is activated by pressing the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever, with the gear shift in the D position. The transmission control indicator light, the word off, will illuminate the transmission operates in gears one through three. To return to D, overdrive mode, press the transmission control switch, TCS. The TCIL, the word off, will no longer be illuminated. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The instrument panel features many indicators to give you important information about your vehicle. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. This warning illuminates when the fuel cap is not installed correctly. 
check the fuel cap and turn it clockwise one-eighth of a turn until it stops for proper installation. When the fuel filler cap is properly reinstalled, the warning will turn off after a period of normal driving. Continuing to operate the vehicle with the check fuel cap light on may activate the service engine soon warning light. It may take a long period of time for the system to detect an improperly installed fuel filler cap. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates when the overdrive function has been turned off using the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever. If the light does not come on or the light flashes steadily, have your vehicle serviced as soon as possible, as damage to the transmission may occur. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light flashes when the traction control system is active. If the light remains on, have the system serviced immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates to ensure the circuit is functional. If the light does not illuminate momentarily at startup, remains on or continues to flash, the ABS needs to be serviced. With the ABS light on, normal The instrument panel features many indicators to give you important in This warning illuminates when the fuel cap is not installed correctly. Check the fuel cap and turn it clockwise one-eighth of a turn until it stops for proper installation. When the fuel filler cap is properly reinstalled, the warning will turn off after a period of normal driving. Continuing to operate the vehicle with the check fuel cap light on may activate the service engine soon warning light. It may take a long period of time for the system to detect an improperly installed fuel filler cap. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates when the overdrive function has been turned off using the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever. If the light does not come on or the light flashes steadily, have your vehicle serviced as soon as possible, as damage to the transmission may occur. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light flashes when the traction control system is active. If the light remains on, have the system serviced immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates to ensure the circuit is functional. If the light does not illuminate momentarily at startup, remains on, or continues to flash, the ABS needs to be serviced. With the ABS light on, normal braking is still functional. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates if the parking brake is engaged. The light also illuminates momentarily at startup to ensure the circuit is functional. If the brake warning lamp does not illuminate at these times, or illuminates after releasing the parking brake, seek service immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates to confirm that the airbags are operational. If the light fails to illuminate, continues to flash or remains on, have the system serviced immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
This light illuminates to remind you to fasten your safety belts. The safety belt, belt minder warning chime will also sound intermittently to remind you to fasten your safety belts. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates briefly to ensure the system is functional. If the light turns on solid after the engine is started, temporary malfunctions may be present. Examples are, the vehicle has run out of fuel, poor fuel quality or water in the fuel. The fuel cap may not have been properly installed and securely tightened. Filling the fuel tank with high quality fuel of the recommended octane and or properly installing and securely tightening the fuel cap can correct these temporary malfunctions. After three driving cycles without these or any other temporary malfunctions present, the light should turn off. A driving cycle consists of a cold engine startup followed by mixed city highway driving. No additional vehicle service is required. Please note that if the fuel cap is not properly secured, the warning, check fuel cap, will be displayed on the message center. The warning will be reset once the cap is properly tightened and your vehicle is driven a short distance. If the light remains on, have your vehicle serviced at the first available opportunity. If the light is blinking, engine misfire is occurring, which could damage your catalytic converter. You should drive in a moderate fashion, avoiding heavy acceleration and deceleration, and have your vehicle serviced at the first available opportunity. Under engine misfire conditions, excessive exhaust temperatures could damage the catalytic converter, the fuel system, interior floor coverings, or other vehicle components, possibly causing a fire. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The left lever on the steering column controls the windshield wipers and washers, which give you a quick way to clean your windshield with or without spraying the washer fluid. For extended wiper blade quality, occasional cleaning of the wiper blades is required. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. To begin your experience, select a feature from the menu to the left. Your vehicle is equipped with sturdy cup holders, conveniently mounted in the cushion of the front center seat. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The cup holders fold out from the leading edge of the center seat and are designed to over-rotate from the seat when subjected to a heavy load. The cup holders can be reset by rotating to the closed position. Use only soft cups in the cup holder. Hard objects may injure you in a collision. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below. The child-proof door locks are located on the rear edge of each rear door. When these locks are set, the rear doors cannot be opened from the inside. The rear doors can be opened from the outside when the doors are unlocked. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation.
increase The child-proof door locks are located on the rear edge of each rear door. When these locks are set, the rear doors cannot be opened from the inside. The rear doors can be opened from the outside when the doors are unlocked. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Move the lock control up to engage the child-proof lock. Move the control down to disengage the child-proof lock. The child-proof door locks must be set separately for each door. Setting the lock for one door will not automatically set the lock for both doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Your vehicle's door locks are electrically powered for your convenience and security. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press the left portion of the control to unlock all the doors and the right portion of the control to lock all the doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
Message Center. The Electronic Message Center located on your instrument cluster displays important vehicle information through a constant monitor of vehicle systems. This system only works when the ignition is in the on position. Select. Press this control to select functions shown in the setup menu. Reset. Press this control to reset functions shown in the setup menu. Info menu. Press the info control to display the following. Trip odometer, odometer, distance to empty, average fuel economy, instantaneous fuel economy. Distance to empty, DTE. The distance to empty function estimates approximately how far you can drive with the fuel remaining in your tank under normal driving conditions. Remember to turn the ignition off when refueling your vehicle to allow this feature to correctly detect the added fuel. The DTE function will display low fuel level and sound a tone for one second when you have approximately 50 miles, 80 kilometers to empty. If you reset this warning message, this display and tone will return within 10 minutes or 10 miles. Average Fuel Economy, AFE. The AFE function displays your average fuel economy in liters or miles gallon. It is important to press the reset control, press and hold reset for two seconds in order to reset the function after setting the speed control to get accurate highway fuel economy readings. Instantaneous fuel economy. This function will display your fuel economy as a bar graph, ranging from poor economy to excellent economy. Your vehicle must be moving to calculate instantaneous fuel economy. When your vehicle is not moving, this function shows arrow down, one or no bars illuminated. Instantaneous fuel economy cannot be reset. Setup menu. Press the setup control for the following displays. System check, display, odometer, speedometer, text size, normal, large, units, English, metric, language, compass zone, calibration, oil minder start value. System check. The system check function causes the message center to cycle through each of the systems being monitored. For each of the monitored systems, the message center will indicate either an OK message or a warning message for three seconds. Pressing the select control cycles the message center through each of the systems being monitored. Display type. Select this function from the setup menu. Press the select control to change the display. Text size. Select this function from the setup menu. Press the select control to change the text size. Units, English metric. Select this function from the setup menu for the current units to be displayed. Press the select control to change from English to metric. Language. Select this function from the setup menu for the current language to be displayed. Pressing the select control cycles the message center through each of the language choices. Compass display. The compass reading may be affected when you drive near large buildings, bridges, power lines, and powerful broadcast antenna. Magnetic or metallic objects placed in, on, or near the vehicle may also affect compass accuracy. Usually, when something affects the compass readings, the compass will correct itself after a few days of operating your vehicle in normal conditions. If the compass still appears to be inaccurate, a manual calibration may be necessary. Please see your owner's guide for more information. Oil Minder Start Value Select this function from the setup menu for the current display mode. Press the select control to change oil value. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about.
The side view mirrors enable you to see upcoming traffic from either side of your vehicle. The power side view mirror control panel is located above the power window control panel on the driver's armrest. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The ignition must be in the ACC or on position to adjust the power side view mirrors. Slide the center switch on the module to L to select the left mirror or to R to select the right mirror. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. After selecting which mirror you would like to adjust using the center switch, move this control in the direction you wish to tilt the mirror. Then, return the center switch to the middle position to lock mirrors in place. Setting the memory positions. Move the side view mirrors to the desired position using the mirror module control and then press the set control located on the driver's door. The set control indicator light will briefly illuminate. While the light is illuminated, a memory mirror position may be programmed at any time by pressing the one control or the two control giving you two available programmable settings. Once each of the two positions has been programmed, you may activate them by pressing each memory control once, one or two, or they will automatically activate once the unlock control is pressed on the corresponding one or two remote transmitter. The memory control can also be used to program set positions for the driver's seat and the power adjustable foot pedals. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Both outside mirrors may be heated automatically to remove ice, mist, and fog when the rear window defrost is activated. The rear window defroster control is located on the instrument panel. The defroster turns off automatically after 10 minutes or when the ignition is turned off. Do not remove ice from the mirrors with the scraper or attempt to readjust the mirror glass if it is frozen in place. Doing so may cause damage to the glass and mirrors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click and Your vehicle may be equipped with an inside rear view mirror with an auto dimming function. This safety feature helps give you peace of mind by reducing glare from the rear view mirror. Your vehicle's windows are electrically powered and can be controlled with a simple switch. The window lock on the driver's armrest, when activated, prevents the passenger's windows from raising and lowering. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press Auto completely down and release quickly. The driver's window will open fully. Depress again to stop window operation. The One Touch Down function can be deactivated during operation by depressing the top part of the driver's power window control. A dead battery or loss of power condition while the window glass is moving will result in an inoperative One Touch Down feature. If this should occur, the window glass will operate as a standard power window. The one touch down feature will be restored when the glass reaches the full up position. Accessory delay. With accessory delay, the window switches may be used for up to 10 minutes after the ignition switch is turned to the off position or until any door is opened. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
Press the bottom portion of the rocker switch to open windows. Press the top portion of the rocker switch to close windows. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The window lock feature allows only the driver to operate the power windows. Activate the window lock when you have children in the car so they don't injure themselves by operating the windows unintentionally. To lock out all the window controls except for the drivers, press the left side of the control. Press the right side to restore the window controls. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Reverse Sensing System, Park Aid. The Reverse Sensing System sounds a tone to warn the driver of obstacles near the rear bumper and functions only when R, Reverse Gear, is selected. Before you disable, enable the Reverse Sensing System feature, put the vehicle in R, Reverse. Press the reset control to turn the Park Aid on or off. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Lincoln's commitment to safety is evidenced by the town car, which since inception has consistently been awarded the government's highest safety grade for frontal crashes, as rated by the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Airbags do not inflate slowly or gently, and the risk of injury from a deploying airbag is greatest closest to the trim covering the airbag module. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, recommends a minimum distance of at least 25 centimeters, 10 inches, between an occupant's chest and the driver airbag module. You can take the following steps to properly position yourself away from the airbag. Move your seat to the rear as far as you can while still reaching the pedals comfortably. Recline the seat slightly, one or two degrees, from the upright position. Front airbags are designed to inflate in frontal and near frontal collisions, not rollover, side impact, or rear impacts, unless the collision causes sufficient longitudinal deceleration. After airbag deployment, it is normal to notice a smoke-like powdery residue or smell the burnt propellant. Airbags can kill or injure a child in a child seat. Never place a rear-facing child seat in front of an active airbag. If you must use a forward-facing child seat in the front seat, move the seat all the way back. Always transport children 12 years old and under in the back seat and always properly use appropriate child restraints. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Located in the center pad of the steering wheel and in the dashboard above the glove box, the airbags are designed to work with the safety belt to help protect the driver and right front passenger from certain upper body injuries and frontal collisions. When you start the car, the airbag readiness light will illuminate to confirm that the airbags, front or side, are operational. If the light fails to illuminate, continues to flash, or remains on, have the system serviced immediately. 
The SRS warning chime will also sound when a malfunction in the supplemental restraint system, front or side, has been detected. Have the supplemental restraint system inspected immediately. Even with an airbag supplemental restraint system present, all occupants of the vehicle, including the driver, should always properly wear their safety belts. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The side airbags, in combination with the seat belts, can help reduce the risk of severe injuries in the event of a significant side impact collision. All occupants of the vehicle, including the driver, should always wear their safety belts, even when a side airbag SRS is provided. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The side airbag system consists of an inflatable nylon bag, airbag, with a gas generator concealed behind the outboard bolster of the driver and front passenger seat backs. A special seat cover designed to allow airbag deployment. The same warning light, electronic control and diagnostic unit as used for the front airbags. And two crash sensors located under the outboard side of the front seats attached to the floor. The side airbag, SRS, is designed to activate when the vehicle sustains lateral deceleration, sufficient to cause the sensors to close an electrical circuit that initiates airbag inflation. The side airbags are fitted on the outboard side of the seat backs of the front seats. In certain lateral collisions, the airbag on the side affected by the collision will be inflated. The airbag was designed to inflate between the door panel and occupant to further enhance the protection provided occupants in side impact collisions. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option. Click an option. The automatic locking mode enables the shoulder belt to be automatically pre-locked for all passengers except the driver. For example, any time a child safety seat is installed in the vehicle. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. To use the automatic locking mode, Buckle the combination lap and shoulder belt. Grasp the shoulder portion and pull downward until the entire belt is extracted. Allow the belt to retract. As the belt retracts, you will hear a clicking sound. This indicates the safety belt is now in the automatic locking mode. To disengage the automatic locking mode, disconnect the combination lap shoulder belt and allow it to retract completely to deactivate the automatic locking mode and activate the vehicle sensitive emergency locking mode. It is also important to know that most new forward facing child safety seats include a tether strap which goes over the back of the seat and hooks to an anchoring point. Tether straps are available as an accessory for many older safety seats. Contact the manufacturer of your child seat for information about ordering a tether strap. The rear seats of your vehicle are equipped with built-in tether strap anchors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Your seat belt system includes lap and shoulder belts in always drive and ride with your seat back upright and the lap belt snug and low across the hips. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation.
To fasten your combination lap and shoulder belts, insert the belt tongue into the proper buckle, the buckle closest to the direction the tongue is coming from, until you hear a snap and feel it latch. Make sure the tongue is securely fastened in the buckle. To unfasten, push the release button and remove the tongue from the buckle. Belt Minder The belt minder feature is a supplemental warning to the safety belt warning function. This feature provides additional reminders to the driver and passenger that the driver's safety belt is unbuckled by intermittently sounding a chime and illuminating the safety belt warning lamp in the instrument cluster. To disable the belt minder feature for one time only, please follow the directions stated in the seating and safety restraint chapter of your owner's guide. Make sure you uncoil and retract the safety belt during the belt minor deactivation. Simply buckling and unbuckling your safety belt will not disable the belt minder. Safety Restraint Warnings To reduce the risk of injury, make sure children sit where they can be properly restrained. Never let a passenger hold a child on his or her lap while the vehicle is moving. The passenger cannot protect the child from injury in a collision. All occupants of the vehicle, including the driver, should always properly wear their safety belts, even when an airbag SRS is provided. It is extremely dangerous to ride in a cargo area, inside or outside of a vehicle. Do not allow people to ride in any area of your vehicle that is not equipped with seats and safety belts. In a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to die than a person wearing a safety belt. Each seating position in your vehicle has a specific safety belt assembly, which is made up of one buckle and one tongue that are designed to be used as a pair. Use the shoulder belt on the outside shoulder only. Never wear the shoulder belt under the arm. Never swing the safety belt around your neck over the inside shoulder. Never use a single belt for more than one person. Always transport children 12 years old and under in the back seat and always properly use appropriate child restraints. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Your vehicle has safety belt height adjustments for the driver, right front passenger, and second row outboard passengers. Failure to adjust the safety belt properly could reduce the effectiveness of the seat belt and increase the risk of injury in a collision. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. To lower the shoulder belt height, push the button and slide the height adjuster down. To raise the height of the shoulder belt, slide the height adjuster up. Pull down on the height adjuster to make sure it is locked in place. If the safety belt is too short when fully extended, there is a 20 cm 8 inch safety belt extension assembly that can be added, part number 611C22. This assembly can be obtained from your dealer at no cost. Use only extensions manufactured by the same supplier as the safety belt. Manufacturer identification is located at the end of the webbing on the label. Also, use the safety belt extension only if the safety belt is too short for you when fully extended. Do not use extensions to change the fit of the shoulder belt across the torso. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. The optional heated seat control is located on the center console for the front seats and on the rear door panels for the rear seats. The heated seats will operate when the ignition is in the run position and will turn off automatically when the ignition is turned to the off position. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. 
Push the left portion of the control for minimum heat. Please note that there may be a slight delay in cooling the seats as the unit activates. A blue light illuminates on the button. Push the icon again to disengage. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Push the right portion of the control for maximum heat. Please note that there may be a slight delay in heating the seats as the unit activates. A blue light illuminates on the button. Push the icon again to disengage. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Your vehicle's front seats provide many easy-to-adjust features designed for your comfort and safety. Make all seat adjustments before you start driving. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the Play option to view the entire feature presentation. The power lumbar control is located on the front inboard side of the seat. Press the top side of the control to adjust firmness. Press the bottom side of the control to adjust softness. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To adjust the seat back, use the control located on the inside of each front door. Press the front portion of the control to recline the seat back forward or the rear portion to recline the seat backward. Do not pile cargo higher than the seat backs to avoid injuring people in a collision or sudden stop. Always drive and ride with your seat back upright and the lap belt snug and low across the hips. Reclining the seat back can cause an occupant to slide under the seat safety belt, resulting in severe personal injuries in the event of a collision. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This control is located on the inside of each front door. Press the front portion of the control to move the seat forward or the rear portion to move the seat backward. Press the up front or down front portion of the control to move the front portion of the seat cushion up or down. Press the up rear or down rear portion of the control to move the rear portion of the seat cushion up or down. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Located on the driver's door panel, this system allows automatic positioning of the driver's seat to programmable positions. One way to recall the memory seat positions is to put the gear shift in park and then press the unlock control on your remote entry transmitter. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Move the driver's seat to the desired position using the seat controls and then press the set control located on the driver's door. The set control indicator light will briefly illuminate. While the light is illuminated, a memory seat position may be programmed at any time by pressing the one or two control, giving you two available programmable settings. This system also allows automatic positioning of the outside rear view mirrors and adjustable pedals. The remote keyless entry system can also control the memory seats, mirrors, adjustable pedals feature. However, only the first two programmed transmitters will recall a different memory position. To activate this feature, position the seat, mirrors, and adjustable pedals to the position desired. Press the set control on the driver's door panel. Within five seconds, Press one control on the remote transmitter and then press the one or two button on the driver's door panel to which you would like to associate with the seat and driver one or driver two positions. Repeat this procedure for another remote transmitter if desired.
Once each of the two positions has been programmed, you may activate them by pressing the unlock control on the corresponding one or two remote transmitter. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The controls conveniently located in the rear seat center console allow the rear seat passengers to adjust some audio and climate control features, as well as to move the front passenger seat forward or backward. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press the memory preset controls 3 and 5 simultaneously on the front audio controls to lock out the rear seat controls. They will remain disabled until the front seat passengers enable them again by simultaneously pressing the 3 and 5 preset controls. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The rear passenger can move the front passenger seat forward or backward using the control located in the rear center console. Move the control forward or backward to move the front passenger seat. Remote seat adjustment lockout. The window lockout control located on the driver's door will also lock out the remote seat adjustment. To lock out the remote seat adjustment feature, press the right side of the control. Press the left side to restore the remote seat adjustment control. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. When in the radio mode, press the Next control to select a preset station from memory. When in the tape and CD modes, press Next to listen to the next selection. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the mode control to select between different playing media, AM, FM1, FM2, tape, or CD if equipped. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press volume up or down in any mode to adjust the volume. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press fan up or down to adjust the fan speed. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press temp up or down to adjust the temperature. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to Each front seat armrest is built with a storage bin with a padded, hinged lid. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The storage bins built into the front seat armrests allow you to store CDs, tour books, cell phone chargers, etc. Press the chrome button below the lid to open the armrest cover. In addition, the front seat armrest has a locking feature that will be engaged when the armrest is in the up position and a collision with sufficient forward deceleration causes a locking pin to activate. To disengage this locking pin, the armrest must be inspected and serviced by a qualified technician in accordance with the vehicle service manual. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Known for its abundant storage and trunk space, your town car has been redesigned to increase its usable stowage space in and outside the seating area. Leather pouches are built into the leading edge of the driver and passenger seat cushions. 
to interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The pouches on the front edge of the driver's and passenger's seat cushions are ideal for storing maps and restaurant guides. Pull the elastic band to access the front seat pouch. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Known for its abundant storage and trunk space, your town car has been redesigned to increase its usable stowage space in and outside the seating area. The center folding armrest for the driver and front seat passenger is equipped with a covered utility compartment. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The center armrest storage bin provides space for stowing small articles such as CDs and travel sized tissues. The storage bin is hinged on both sides to allow easy access by the driver and the front seat passenger. Press the control on the driver's side and the lid will open and fold up toward the front seat passenger. Press the control on the front seat passenger side and the lid will open and fold up toward the driver. For extra seating space, pull up the armrest to the upright position. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Known for its abundant storage and trunk space, your town car has been redesigned to increase its usable stowage space in and outside the seating area. The rear center console incorporates a utility compartment to provide easy storage and access. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. In addition to hosting the optional remote radio, climate and seat adjustment controls, as well as auxiliary power points, the rear seat center console serves as a folding armrest with a tissue holder and a storage bin for stowing small articles. Press the control below the padded lid to open the cover. For extra seating space, pull up the armrest to the upright position. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an op Known for its abundant storage and trunk space, your town car has been redesigned to increase its usable stowage space in and outside the seating area. The class-leading luggage compartment is more spacious and easier than ever for loading and unloading cargo. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. In the trunk, the spare tire has been moved to an upright right side position to open up much more cargo room. Lift the cover of the deep well in the center of the trunk to access the storage space and use it for stowing grocery bags, a first aid kit or other items. The baggage dividers in the deep well help organize your stowed items and can be removed to create a single cargo space. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The automatic four-speed transmission is electronically controlled for smoother shifting. Overdrive automatically selects a suitable gear for your speed and acceleration and provides the best fuel economy. The right lever on the steering column controls the gear shift and overdrive button. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation.
This position locks the transmission and prevents the rear wheels from turning. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into P, park. Always set the parking brake fully before shifting into P, park. Make sure the gear shift lever is securely latched in P, park. Turn off the ignition whenever you leave your vehicle. This vehicle is equipped with a brake shift interlock feature that prevents the gear shift lever from being moved from P, park, when the ignition is in the on position, unless the brake pedal is depressed. You may also find that you are able to move the gear shift out of the park position when the ignition is off and the key is in the off position without depressing the brake pedal. Always depress the brake pedal before attempting to move the gear shift out of the P, park, position. If you cannot move the gear shift lever out of P, park, with the ignition in the on position and the brake pedal depressed, apply the parking brake, turn the ignition key to lock, and then remove the key. Insert the key and turn it to off. Apply the brake pedal and shift to N, neutral. Start the vehicle. If it is necessary to use the above procedure to move the gear shift lever, it is possible that a fuse has been blown or the vehicle's brake lamps are not operating properly. Do not drive your vehicle until you verify that the brake lamps are working. Refer to the fuses and relays in the roadside emergencies chapter in your owner's guide. Hold the brake pedal down while you move the gear shift lever from P, park, to another position. If you do not hold the brake pedal down, your vehicle may move unexpectedly and injure someone. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. With the gear shift lever in R, reverse, the vehicle will move backward. Always come to a complete stop before shifting into and out of R, reverse. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. With the gear shift lever in N, neutral, the vehicle can be started and is free to roll. Hold the brake pedal down while in this gear. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This is the normal driving position. D, overdrive, can be deactivated by pressing the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever. The transmission control indicator light, TCIL, the word off, will illuminate. Each time the vehicle is started or is shut off and restarted, the transmission will automatically return to normal overdrive mode. You must press the transmission control switch to cancel overdrive operation if driving in overdrive is not desired. To gain acceleration in overdrive or drive OD off when passing another vehicle, push the accelerator to the floor. The transmission will downshift to the appropriate gear, third, second, or first gear. Note, the transmission shift strategy will slightly delay transmission upshift in cold weather to decrease the time required to warm up the engine and produce heat in the passenger compartment. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Use 2, second, to start up on slippery roads or to provide additional engine braking on downgrades. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Use 1, low, to provide maximum engine braking on steep downgrades. Upshifts can be made by shifting to 2, second, or to D, overdrive. Selecting 1, low, at higher speeds causes the transmission to shift to a lower gear and will shift to 1, low, after the vehicle decelerates to the proper speed. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. D, OD off, provides more engine braking than D, overdrive, and is useful when you drive with a heavy load, tow a trailer up or down steep hills, 
or when additional downhill engine braking is desired. D, OD off, is activated by pressing the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever with the gear shift in the D position. The transmission control indicator light, the word off, will illuminate the transmission operates in gears one through three. To return to D, overdrive mode, press the transmission control switch, TCS. The TCIL, the word off, will no longer be illuminated. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To begin your experience, select a feature from the menu to the left. This vehicle is equipped with an anti-lock braking system, ABS. The ABS helps prevent the wheels from locking up and skidding during hard braking, allowing you more control while steering. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. In an emergency, apply continuous force on the brake to help prevent wheel lockup when braking on slippery surfaces. Do not pump your brakes. A noise from the hydraulic pump motor and pulsation in the pedal may be observed during ABS braking events. Pedal pulsation coupled with noise while braking under panic conditions on loose gravel, bumps, wet or snowy roads is normal and indicates proper functioning of the vehicle's anti-lock brake system. If the vehicle has continuous vibration or shutter in the steering wheel while braking, a qualified service technician should inspect the vehicle. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The ABS operates by detecting the onset of wheel lockup during brake applications and then compensating for this tendency. The wheels are prevented from locking even when the brakes are firmly applied. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click. The child-proof door locks are located on the rear edge of each rear door. When these locks are set, the rear doors cannot be opened from the inside. The rear doors can be opened from the outside when the doors are unlocked. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Move the lock control up to engage the child-proof lock. Move the control down to disengage the child-proof lock. The child-proof door locks must be set separately for each door. Setting the lock for one door will not automatically set the lock for both doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Your vehicle's door locks are electrically powered for your convenience and security. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Press the left portion of the control to unlock all the doors and the right portion of the control to lock all the doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Press the left portion of the control to unlock all the doors and the right portion of the control to lock all the doors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
The multifunction headlamp control is located to the left of the steering wheel. Your vehicle may be equipped with durable, cost-efficient HID, high-intensity discharge headlamps, which increase visibility on the road and make the glare less blinding to oncoming traffic. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Auto Lamp Control The Auto Lamp System provides light-sensitive automatic on-off control of the exterior lights normally controlled by the headlamp control. The Auto Lamp System also keeps the lights on for a pre-selected period of time after the ignition switch is turned to the off position. To turn the Auto Lamps on, rotate the control counterclockwise. To turn the Auto Lamps off, Rotate the control clockwise to the O, off position. To program the amount of time the auto lamps stay on, 1. Turn the ignition to the off position. 2. Turn the headlamp switch to the auto lamp position. 3. Turn the headlamp switch to the O, off position. 4. Turn the ignition to run and then back to off. 5. Turn the headlamp switch to the auto lamp position. 6. Wait the desired amount of time for delay, then turn the headlamp switch to off. 7. Steps 3 through 5 need to be performed within 10 seconds. Rotate the headlamp control clockwise to the first position to turn on the parking lamps instrument panel lamps, license plate lamps, and tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Rotate the control clockwise to the second position to turn on the headlamps in addition to the parking lamps, instrument panel lamps, license plate lamps, and tail lamps. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The panel dimmer control is used to adjust the brightness of the gauges on your instrument panel during headlamp and parking lamp operation. Rotate the thumb wheel to the right to brighten or to the left to dim. Rotate the thumb wheel fully to the right to also turn on the dome lamp. To turn off the dome lamp, rotate fully to the left. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Push the turn signal lever toward the instrument panel to activate high beams. Pull the lever toward you to deactivate high beams. Pull the lever toward you slightly to activate and release to deactivate the flash to pass signal. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. The side view mirrors enable you to see upcoming traffic from either side of your vehicle. The power side view mirror control panel is located above the power window control panel on the driver's armrest. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The ignition must be in the ACC or on position to adjust the power side view mirrors. Slide the center switch on the module to L to select the left mirror or to R to select the right mirror. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. After selecting which mirror you would like to adjust using the center switch, move this control in the direction you wish to tilt the mirror. Then, return the center switch to the middle position to lock mirrors in place. Setting the memory positions. 
Move the side view mirrors to the desired position using the mirror module control and then press the set control located on the driver's door. The set control indicator light will briefly illuminate. While the light is illuminated, a memory mirror position may be programmed at any time by pressing the one control or the two control, giving you two available programmable settings. Once each of the two positions has been programmed, you may activate them by pressing each memory control once, one or two, or they will automatically activate once the unlock control is pressed on the corresponding one or two remote transmitter. The memory control can also be used to program set positions for the driver's seat and the power adjustable foot pedals. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Both outside mirrors may be heated automatically to remove ice, mist, and fog when the rear window defrost is activated. The rear window defroster control is located on the instrument panel. The defroster turns off automatically after 10 minutes or when the ignition is turned off. Do not remove ice from the mirrors with the scraper or attempt to readjust the mirror glass if it is frozen in place. Doing so may cause damage to the glass and mirrors. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Your vehicle may be equipped with an inside rear view mirror with an auto dimming function. This safety feature helps give you peace of mind by reducing glare from the rear view mirror. Reverse Sensing System Park Aid the reverse sensing system sounds a tone to warn the driver of obstacles near the rear bumper and functions only when R, reverse gear, is selected. Before you disable, enable the reverse sensing system feature, put the vehicle in R, reverse. Press the reset control to turn the park aid on or off. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Lincoln's commitment to safety is evidenced by the town car, which since inception has consistently been awarded the government's highest safety grade for frontal crashes, as rated by the National Highway and Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Airbags do not inflate slowly or gently, and the risk of injury from a deploying airbag is greatest closest to the trim covering the airbag module. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, recommends a minimum distance of at least 25 centimeters, 10 inches, between an occupant's chest and the driver airbag module. You can take the following steps to properly position yourself away from the airbag. Move your seat to the rear as far as you can while still reaching the pedals comfortably. Recline the seat slightly, one or two degrees, from the upright position. Front airbags are designed to inflate in frontal and near frontal collisions, not rollover, side impact, or rear impacts, unless the collision causes sufficient longitudinal deceleration. After airbag deployment, it is normal to notice a smoke-like powdery residue or smell the burnt propellant. Airbags can kill or injure a child in a child seat. 
never place a rear-facing child seat in front of an active airbag. If you must use a forward-facing child seat in the front seat, move the seat all the way back. Always transport children 12 years old and under in the back seat and always properly use appropriate child restraints. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Located in the center pad of the steering wheel and in the dashboard above the glove box, the airbags are designed to work with the safety belt to help protect the driver and right front passenger from certain upper body injuries and frontal collisions. When you start the car, the airbag readiness light will illuminate to confirm that the airbags, front or side, are operational. If the light fails to illuminate, continues to flash, or remains on, have the system serviced immediately. The SRS warning chime will also sound when a malfunction in the supplemental restraint system, front or side, has been detected. Have the supplemental restraint system inspected immediately. Even with an airbag supplemental restraint system present, all occupants of the vehicle, including the driver, should always properly wear their safety belts. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more. The side airbags, in combination with the seat belts, can help reduce the risk of severe injuries in the event of a significant side impact collision. All occupants of the vehicle, including the driver, should always wear their safety belts, even when a side airbag SRS is provided. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The side airbag system consists of an inflatable nylon bag, airbag, with a gas generator concealed behind the outboard bolster of the driver and front passenger seat backs, a special seat cover designed to allow airbag deployment, the same warning light, electronic control and diagnostic unit as used for the front airbags, and two crash sensors located under the outboard side of the front seats attached to the floor. The side airbag, SRS, is designed to activate when the vehicle sustains lateral deceleration, sufficient to cause the sensors to close an electrical circuit that initiates airbag inflation. The side airbags are fitted on the outboard side of the seat backs of the front seats. In certain lateral collisions, the airbag on the side affected by the collision will be inflated. The airbag was designed to inflate between the door panel and occupant to further enhance the protection provided occupants in side impact collisions. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Maintaining proper air pressure in your tires helps extend their tread life, improve safety, and reduce your vehicle's fuel consumption. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. When checking your tire pressure, use an accurate tire pressure gauge. Make sure you check the tire pressure when tires are cold, after the vehicle has been parked for at least one hour, or has been driven less than five kilometers, three miles. Checking your tire pressure when the tires are hot will add approximately three pounds of air pressure. Adjust the tire pressure to the recommended specifications found on the certification label, which is attached to the front door latch pillar on the driver's side. Tire pressure information can also be found on the label inside the gas cap door. 
When you open the gas cap door, please observe the recommended pressures for front and rear tires on the label. Improperly inflated tires can affect vehicle handling and can fail suddenly, possibly resulting in loss of vehicle control. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To safely operate your vehicle, your tires must be the proper type and size, in good condition, with adequate tread, and correctly inflated. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Your vehicle may be equipped with a temporary spare tire. The temporary spare tire for your vehicle is labeled as such. It is smaller than a regular tire and is designed for emergency use only. Replace this tire with a full-size tire as soon as possible. If you use the temporary spare tire continuously or do not follow these precautions, the tire could fail, causing you to lose control of the vehicle, possibly injuring yourself or others. The spare tire is located in the right rear portion of the trunk, stored in an upright position. You can also find the jack in the trunk, next to the wheel well. The lug wrench is attached to the jack. Please note that the air suspension switch must be turned off before using the jack to change a tire. Failure to do so may result in the wheels not lifting off the ground as the vehicle is raised. The off switch is located on the left side of the trunk. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. When to replace your tires. Replace the tires when the tread is worn down to 1 16th of an inch, 2 millimeters, to prevent the vehicle from skidding and hydroplaning. Built-in tread wear indicators, or wear bars, which look like narrow strips of smooth rubber across the tread, will appear on the tire when the tread is worn down to 1 16th of an inch, 2 millimeters. When the tire tread wears down to the same height as these wear bars, the tire is worn out and should be replaced. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration regulations require that a certification label be affixed to a vehicle and prescribe where the certification label may be located. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. You should carefully observe the recommended tire inflation pressure found on the safety compliance certification label attached to the front door latch pillar on the driver's side. Failure to follow tire pressure recommendations can adversely affect the way your vehicle handles. Do not exceed the Ford recommended tire pressure, even if it is less than the maximum pressure allowed for the tire. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. Click an option below to select the feature you would like to learn more about. Keyless Entry System if equipped. You can lock or unlock the vehicle doors and unlatch the trunk without using the key. The Keyless Entry Pad is located outside of the driver's door. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. You can find the factory set code on the owner's wallet card in the glove compartment, taped to the computer module and at your dealer. In addition, you can program your own five digit personal code. To program your code, one, enter the factory set code. 
2. Press the 1 to control within 5 seconds of entering the factory set code. 3. Enter your personal 5-digit code. Each number must be entered within 5 seconds of each other. 4. Enter a 6th digit to indicate which personality feature should be recalled by the personal code. 1, 2 recalls driver personality 1. 3, 4 recalls driver personality 2. 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, 0 do not recall a driver personality. All of the vehicle doors will lock and unlock to confirm programming of the new code. To unlock the driver's door, enter either the factory set code or your personal code. Each digit must be pressed within 5 seconds of the prior digit. The interior lamps will also illuminate. To unlock all doors, enter the factory set code or your personal code. Driver's door unlocks and then press the 3-4 control within 5 seconds. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. To release, open the trunk, enter the factory set code or your personal code. The driver's door will unlock and then press the 5-6 control within 5 seconds of entering the security code. If your vehicle is equipped with the optional power deck lid, pressing the 5-6 control again will close the trunk. You may need to re-enter the keypad code again. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. It is not necessary to enter the factory set or personal code before locking all doors. To lock the doors, press the 7-8 control and the 9-0 control at the same time. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote entry system allows you to lock or unlock all vehicle doors, as well as open the trunk without using a key. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas, or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. The remote entry lock feature operates in any ignition position. Press this control to lock all of the doors. The parking lamps, tail lamps, will flash to confirm the doors are closed and locked. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote entry unlock feature operates in any ignition position. Press this control to unlock the driver's door. The interior lamps will illuminate to verify that the door has been successfully unlocked. Press this control a second time within seconds to unlock all of the doors. Illuminated Entry The lamps illuminate when the remote entry system is used to unlock the door or doors. The system automatically turns off after 25 seconds or when the ignition is turned to the start or ACC position. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The remote entry lock feature operates in any ignition position. However, if the ignition is in the on position and the gear shift is in D, drive, the trunk will only open if the vehicle is moving 5 km per hour, 3 miles per hour, or slower. Press the control to open the trunk. If your vehicle is fitted with the optional power deck lid, press the control twice to open the trunk and twice to close it. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The panic control feature only operates with the ignition in the off position. Press this control to activate the alarm. To deactivate the alarm, press this control again or turn the ignition to the ACC, on, or start positions. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
Secure Lock. As an engine immobilization system, the Secure Lock passive anti theft system prevents the engine from being started unless a coded key programmed to your vehicle is used. This system is not compatible with non Ford aftermarket remote start systems. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Your vehicle is supplied with three coded keys. Only a coded key will start your vehicle. Spare coded keys can be purchased from your dealership. Your dealership can program your key or, to do it yourself, refer to the Programming Spare Keys chapter in your owner's guide. The use of the wrong type of coded key or of an unprogrammed key may lead to a no start condition. Therefore, your programmed keys cannot be copied. To purchase spare coded keys, contact your dealership. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The vehicle is armed immediately after switching the ignition to the one off lock position. The indicator light on the instrument panel will flash every two seconds when the vehicle is armed. Switching the ignition to the three on position with a coded key disarms the vehicle. The indicator light will glow for three seconds and then go out. If the light stays on for an extended period or flashes rapidly, have the system serviced by your dealership or a qualified technician. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The instrument panel features many indicators to give you important information about your vehicle. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. This warning illuminates when the fuel cap is not installed correctly. Check the fuel cap and turn it clockwise one-eighth of a turn until it stops for proper installation. When the fuel filler cap is properly reinstalled, the warning will turn off after a period of normal driving. Continuing to operate the vehicle with the check fuel cap light on may activate the service engine soon warning light. It may take a long period of time for the system to detect an improperly installed fuel filler cap. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates when the overdrive function has been turned off using the transmission control switch, TCS, on the end of the gear shift lever. If the light does not come on or the light flashes steadily, have your vehicle serviced as soon as possible, as damage to the transmission may occur. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light flashes when the traction control system is active. If the light remains on, have the system serviced immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates to ensure the circuit is functional. If the light does not illuminate momentarily at startup, remains on, or continues to flash, the ABS needs to be serviced. With the ABS light on, normal braking is still functional. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates if the parking brake is engaged. The light also illuminates momentarily at startup to ensure the circuit is functional. If the brake warning lamp does not illuminate at these times or illuminates after releasing the parking brake, seek service immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.
This light illuminates to confirm that the airbags are operational. If the light fails to illuminate, continues to flash, or remains on, have the system serviced immediately. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates to remind you to fasten your safety belts. The safety belt, belt minder warning chime will also sound intermittently to remind you to fasten your safety belts. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. This light illuminates briefly to ensure the system is functional. If the light turns on solid after the engine is started, temporary malfunctions may be present. Examples are, the vehicle has run out of fuel, poor fuel quality or water in the fuel, the fuel cap may not have been properly installed and securely tightened. Filling the fuel tank with high quality fuel of the recommended octane and or properly installing and securely tightening the fuel cap can correct these temporary malfunctions. After three driving cycles without these or any other temporary malfunctions present, the light should turn off. A driving cycle consists of a cold engine startup followed by mixed city highway driving. No additional vehicle service is required. Please note that if the fuel cap is not properly secured, the warning, check fuel cap, will be displayed on the message center. The warning will be reset once the cap is properly tightened and your vehicle is driven a short distance. If the light remains on, have your vehicle serviced at the first available opportunity. If the light is blinking, engine misfire is occurring, which could damage your catalytic converter. You should drive in a moderate fashion, avoiding heavy acceleration and deceleration, and have your vehicle serviced at the first available opportunity. Under engine misfire conditions, excessive exhaust temperatures could damage the catalytic converter, the fuel system, interior floor coverings, or other vehicle components, possibly causing a fire. For more information, please consult your owner's guide. The left lever on the steering column controls the windshield wipers and washers, which give you a quick way to clean your windshield with or without spraying the washer fluid. For extended wiper blade quality, occasional cleaning of the wiper blades is required. To interact with this feature, click any of the red highlighted areas or simply choose the play option to view the entire feature presentation. Rotate the windshield wiper control to the desired interval, low or high speed position. The bars of varying length are for intermittent wipers. When in this position, rotate the control upward for fast intervals and downward for slow intervals. The exterior lamps will illuminate when the ignition is on and the windshield wiper control is in the interval, low or high position. The lights will remain on until 30 seconds after the wipers are turned off. For more information, please consult your owner's guide.